we're going to review how to make a check register on a spreadsheet. It has all kinds of features. You can basically enter in any starting balance and then based on all of the transactions, all of the debits that you lose and all of the credits that you gain, you'll see your balance change over time until you reach a final balance down here. You also are going to set it up so that you can see here all the numbers are entered in a currency format. Anything that's red is a deduction from your account. And also you'll notice that these numbers are in date format. And then this column right here, there are little check boxes so that you can check your registry maybe against a bank statement to see that it's accurate. And this is just one way to set up the spreadsheet. I'm not even saying it's the best way. It's just a way to do it. So you can get an idea if you like this layout and this setup of how you might do it on your own and how you might customize it. So let's go over a few things here and what we'll do is we'll go into our drive and make a brand new spreadsheet. This is the one I just showed you. We'll make one right now. So new sheets and you should have this in a personal finance folder. Create it and make sure you share it with everyone at the school. So why don't you take a moment and do that. What you're doing is you're going into your drive, creating a personal finance folder, and then create a sheet that is shared with everyone. And you would probably want to even share the whole folder with the class. So anything that you do create, it's automatically shared. So I'm going to call this Sean's Check Registry. You should title yours in a similar way. So go ahead and do that. All right. So how are we going to get started on this? Well, the first thing we want to do is enter the appropriate headings for our registry. And this is different for everybody. I want to type these out and then you should pause the video and, and do it yourself. We've got check number, date, description of transaction. Yep, spelled that right. Payment slash debit. In this cell right here, I'm going to type equals character and I'm going to type in the Unicode character 10004 to get a check mark, which looks pretty. And then I'm going to put in a, a fee and then deposit, which is also a credit. And then our balance, which we'll keep track of over here. So before I go on, I'm going to click this box. I'm going to wrap this. So you can see the text, and why don't you pause the video and make sure you have all of these headings entered correctly. Then press play when you're ready to resume. Okay, so at this point you should have these headings in. What I'm going to now do is go to, I want to, well, I want to freeze this row right here. So I'm going to click on the first row. I'm going to go to view, and then freeze the first row. So why don't you do that? Pause the video, go to view and freeze and click on first row. All right, once you've frozen this, you can now scroll and what happens is you'll always be able to see that row no matter how far down you are in your registry. Okay. Now I'm going to click the row and I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to bold the text. I'm going to center it. And I'm going to wrap it right here. So why don't you pause the video and do those three things. Bold, center, and wrap. Okay, now I don't like the way this looks because I feel like um, these, this column right here and this one has words on two rows. I'm gonna click on a column and stretch it out just so it's wide enough so that nothing's doubled up. And I can always come back later and change that. There we go, it looks a little better to me. All right. Now, what else are we going to do? We want to change this column so that we can enter in dates, this column for basically currency, and the same with this column, and this column, and this column. So the way we do that is I'm going to click on date, and go to format, number, and then pick the date. This will allow me to enter in dates very easily. So go ahead and do that. Click on column B, go to format, number, and date. Okay. I'm going to click on that. Now I'm all set up. I'm going to just do a quick test. I'll type in 10 slash 13, hit enter, and you can see that the format is entered as a date. Although it's not centered, so I want to fix that. Go to delete it. Click in column B, and in fact, why don't I just do this? Click right here. 
everything all at once and center it all. And now our date, let's test that, will be centered. Yay. All right. So now I'm going to click on column D and I'm going to hit control or command to click also on F, G, and H. Now you can do this all at once or one at a time. Once you have these columns selected, you can go to format, number, and I'm going to pick currency right here. So why don't you pause the video. You can do this one column at a time or all at once by hitting control or command. Select those columns and go to format, number, and currency. And then press play when you're ready to move on. Okay. So now if I enter in any dollar amount, right, you can see the dollar sign appears immediately. And that just means that I've formatted those cells to enter in currencies. What else? Well, this column right here is for the balance. Okay, so what I want to do is say, well, if my balance goes below zero, the font should be red. So let's do that. We're going to go to Format. So I select the column H, go to Format. And then down here, you'll see Conditional Formatting. I'm going to click that, and this little window will pop up on the side for Conditional Format Rules. Now right now you can see it says apply to range. It's it's going from H1 to H1000. That's this column right here. And it's already got a rule. It's trying, it's saying if it's not empty, make it green. I don't want that. You can see it's already starting to do that. What I'm gonna do is say, scroll down, if it's less than zero, I want to click less than zero, then I want to make it red. So why don't you do that? Pause the video, go to column H. Go to form, Format, Conditional Formatting, and then this window right here, make sure it says, if it's less than zero, make your font red, and then press play when you're ready to resume. Okay, so you've got your Conditional Formatting set up. Click Done, and now let's just test it. I'm gonna type in negative one, and see how it turned red? It's working. Now, in this column F, hit Control or Command with D, these two columns, I want all of the entries except for the headings to be red all the time. Red will represent any loss to my account. So we go to Format again, Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to enter that rule. The only thing I want to do, you see here it says F1 through F1000. I want to go F2 and D2. Right? I want to start at the second row. I don't want to mess with the heading. So uh, well here I'm saying if it's not empty, okay, that's good. If there's something written down, make it red. Boom. So go ahead and do that. Select column D and F. Go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Make sure over here in the range it goes from F2 to 1000 and D2 to 1000. And if it's not empty, make it red. Pause the video, set that up, and then press play when you're ready to move on. All right, so click Done when that's ready. And now let's test it by entering a number to turn red. Yay. All right, what else can we do? Well, this is really hard to read. So I'm going to go X this out, and I'm going to go to Format. And you'll notice if I scroll down, there's this option, Alternating Colors. Click on that, and you'll see right away what it does. Now, I've only selected one cell. That's, and you can see right here it says Apply to Range F4. Let's delete that. If I click over here, it should select everything, but clearly it doesn't like the order in which I've done that, so I'm just going to start over. Delete that. I'm going to hit undo. Boom. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to format, and I'm going to alternate my colors. And you can see right away what it did. It changed the shading. Now if I pick different colors, you'll see that that alternating pattern will change. Pick a color that you think is easy to read. I like this color right here and I can customize it by messing around with the colors down here. So just do that. Click on this little box right here. Go to Format and Alternate your colors and pick a color scheme that you think works. Then press Play when you're ready to go on. Okay, so we've got our alternating colors. This column is set up for date. This is set up to be text and so is this would be uh, default text as well. But right here in this column, and this column, and this column, it's set up for also here to enter currency. And one thing I want to add are check 
boxes here. Now you can see in this in this sheet right here, it goes up to row 20. So I'll just kind of stop there. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to select the cells I want into the check boxes in. We'll go to insert, and you can see it right there. Under insert, you'll see check box. So go ahead, select the cells. That's in column E from 2 through 20. Then go to insert and select check box. All right, so we're going to hit enter. Um, we're going to pick checkbox, and there they are. These are really cool. You can like, you can just click them. It's very satisfying. Um, all right, now we're basically ready to enter our formulas. And in this problem, I'm going to model from a problem that we did in class. 237, 47 is our starting balance. Now the way I like to set it up is, in this case, I'm going to first enter in all of my dates. So 10, 29, and then 10. 29. So on, on 1029, our starting balance is 237. And then on 1029, we also wrote a check to a school. And it was a payment. It was an $18 payment. And there was no fee, no deposit. We'll put the check number here. It's 115. Then on, and now what I do is, this is a balance line right here. All I have to do is every other line is a new entry. And you'll see why. So you want to do 1030. That's the paycheck. And then 11.5. I'm going to put in an ATM withdrawal. So let's put those amounts in. The paycheck is for 162 over here, 0.75. The ATM, let's say we took out $15, but we paid a $2.25 $2 fee. Okay, now we keep entering. Let's just keep going. We'll go down the line, 11. I think in this case, um, we have 11.7. We write a check, check 116, the next check on the line for uh, a credit card. And our, that check amount will be $51.16. There's no fee attached to that. Okay, and after that, let me just go back and toggle here. So paycheck, oh, I forgot my birthday check on 11.4 for $25. So now we can start to enter everything. And I'm going to start off with my balance of 237.47. So this is just the beginning balance, and then stuff starts to happen. Now, that balance, I'm going to say, is on October 29th. Then on October 29th, um, we have a payment to a high school. So high school payment. And enter the amount. It's $18. It'll turn red. Enter the check number. In this case, it's 115. This is all from our problem class. And the idea is we can now enter in a bunch of transactions here. Um, and then we can quickly compute the balance. So how do we do that? Well, we're just going to cheat a little bit and select all of these so you can see what's happening quickly. Okay, copy, control C, paste. So that's everything entered. I'm going to center this over here. Okay, so these are all of our payments. Now I had to put over here any fees and deposits. So I'm going to go back and just grab them. i just type these all in. Okay, boom. All right. So there's no there's no computation here. That's nothing. Our balance is not updating. So what we want to do is enter a formula to figure it out. Now many people will take, let's say in this case there's an eighteen dollar debit, and they'll drag it over here into the balance column. So you can see that subtraction directly. You're going to do two thirty seven forty seven minus eighteen, and you're going to get a new balance result here. I like to leave these numbers over to the side. It just looks cleaner to me. But you can change that format. And so on this line, I should have a new balance after taking $18 from 237.47. In general, I type in equals, and I go to my previous balance, go up. All I do is press the up arrow there twice. It's H2. I want to subtract anything in this column, subtract anything in this column, and then add anything in this column here. And you might want to pause the video. That's our key formula here h2 minus d3 minus f3 plus g3. 
All right, press play when if you're ready, or otherwise keep it paused. But here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna hit enter. You can see there's the computation. Now, I left this cell blank. There's no formula here. So what I'm going to do is select this blank cell and this cell. Scroll over to that blue square. See that black cross that appears when I scroll? And then just drag it down all the way right past that last deposit. Boom. And it computes everything right away. There's the answer. At the end, we have 532 21, and that's how it works. Right? You're just dragging that formula down. So why don't you pause the video and make sure you're, you're getting that, and then uh, I'll say a few other things. So in your spreadsheet, keep things clean. Like right here, I have some things off to the side, some centered. Keep it clean. Let's do all centered. And um, what's really nice about this feature is that you can change the numbers at the beginning here or change any number and then it will recompute. Maybe you realize, oh no, I actually had a $19 check, not 18, and turn 19 and you'll see that change, right? You see all the numbers change and you shift these around. So that's a cool feature is that you can change numbers as you go. I also like that if you miss something, like maybe there's an additional thing in here you wanna add, you can select copy, not cut, I would copy. I want to just copy and then paste it onto this line right here. And then go back and enter in, let's say something was on the first. Let's say I had a, a, a gift for $10. Once you enter that, it'll then recompute everything below, right? So I'll do $100, right, and so on and so forth. Now, at no point here did we see a negative balance, but let's just pretend we had a really big purchase of $1,000, and you'll see that these numbers here become red and indicate that your balance is negative, in which case you'll have some kind of additional fee on any check you've written. Now you can, you can write a formula uh, to, to show a check fee based on certain rules, but that's something we, uh, I might offer as a challenge, right? It's kind of an if-then statement, but I'll just say that you can do it. Um, Right, you can have it automatically compute fees based on the balance that's left in your account. That's another challenge. All right, so make sure you've got this, and then um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.